In today's 3D Printing 101, I'm going to show you how you can shave hours off your 3D printing time by using multiple processors within Simplify 3D. If you've never used multiple processors in Simplify 3D or you're new to the software, this is a must-watch video. Let's get started. Ah, welcome back to 3D Printing 101 here on Maker's Muse, guys. So this is a beginner's guide to multiple processes within Simplify 3D. So if you've never used them before, this is going to be a great video to start. So what I have here is a file from my buddy Garrett over at Chaos Core Tech. He designed the Thor hammer and made it 3D printable in multiple parts. And he has the hammer part sliced in two so you can join it together afterwards. Now he has two versions because he's a very good modeler and offers you those options. One is a hollow version which you can print face down and this version which is solid and you can see he has his base and which you print this way up to get more detail. But this is a large object. As you can see in my current process, I have the one house selected and 15% infill percentage and 0.2 millimeter layer height. So if I was to print this, it's going to take some time. We're looking at 15 hours or almost 16 hours print time. And I am running at 60 millimeters per second on the extruder. However, what if I told you you could shave five hours or more off this print without losing any strength or detail. Well, you can using multiple processes. Let me show you how. So this is the exact same model, except I have multiple processes. And if I was to print this and select all of them, it's going to look pretty much the same and it's going to take nine hours, 52 minutes, essentially saving five hours of print time for the same model. And don't forget, we're going to need two of these. So in the end, you save 10 hours of printing time, which is pretty impressive considering that you're not going to see any difference. How did I do it? Well, I used multiple processes to set different infill amounts. So let's use G code preview in Simplify 3D layer by layer to show you what I've done. I'm going to press play and it's going to start building the model with some infill here. And what I've done is I've given it a 15% infill up to a certain height. And then it's going to use that infill to build a bit of support for that backing part. It's going to cap it off. Then it's going to start building at a very low infill percentage. This is where we save our time. It's got a sort of 2% infill, which just gives it enough strength without having to waste plastic or time. And then as this builds up, it goes back to a denser infill using my last process to support the overhangs. And then it will slowly build up our detail and then eventually fill it in to the top of the hammer. This means the top of our hammer won't droop in. It will be very strong, but we're not wasting plastic and we're saving a lot of time by having a lower infill inside the model. What I've also done is change my layer heights. Most of the model is actually sliced at 0.3 millimeter layer heights, which is fine if you don't have any detail. But here at the top, we do. So I've made that 0.2 millimeter layer heights. And in your case, you might even want to go even finer. You could do the top at 0.1. If you have some very fine details, you do want to resolve without making the whole model take forever at 0.1 millimeter layer heights. So to achieve this effect, I used multiple processes and made them start and stop at different heights. But how do you know where you want to start and stop? Well, luckily Simplify 3D does have a built-in tool just for that. Simply go to view and cross section or you can hit Control K on your keyboard. So what this will let you do is view a cross section of your model and you can get the exact point at where you might want to add a different process. So here I can change the height and go up like this and I can see the model slowly builds up to the top here. So what I noticed at the bottom here is it has this sort of uh, key which keys it into the other part of the hammer and also this overhang here that I do want to be fairly strong as well for keying into the handle. So what I want to do is probably build up to where the shelf is. If you can see here where the shelf starts, I probably want to have it pretty strong up to that point. So I can enter a number here. It looks like it starts at about 30, maybe 31. So it looks like I want to have a fairly decent infill up to 31 millimeters in the model. So I can close that double click our process. And what I usually do to make sure I remember is I'll enter the height that the process goes to. So I'll enter here zero to 31 and under layer, I am going to give it a 0.3 millimeter layer height and infill percentage. I'll leave it at 15%. I think that's a decent amount of infill for this model and nozzle diameter 0.5. Yes, I am printing on the one flexion with a 0.5 millimeter nozzle. 
that's all fine. But the most important setting to change is under the advanced tab and that's where you can change our layer modifications. Start printing at a certain height and stop printing at a certain height. So we want to start printing at zero obviously, so don't tick that box, but we want to stop printing at 31 millimeters. And let's hit OK. So let's see how that looks. Let's go to prepare to print. And this is what it would look. It's going to stop at 31. And you can see here that we have a nice amount of infill. So it's going to be nice and strong for adding those connections. Now you notice I do have an infill here. And you might be thinking, why do you need that if it's going to continue printing internally? True, it doesn't actually need it. But if I turn infill off for the top layers on this process, it will actually not fill in this part here. So I do need it on and it will add more strength anyway. So that's fine. So let's see how high the second process needs to go. Again, view, cross section, and let's zoom up here to see what we got. So it looks like up to 80 is how high we probably should go. Maybe, let's go with 70, let's go with 79. So it looks like 79 is how high we can get away with a very sparse infill before we need to go back to a denser infill to finish the print. So I'm gonna go with 79, that looks good to me. So to make a new process, just do Control C, selecting the current process, and Control V, copy paste. And with this process, we're going to call it 31 to 79. And with this process, we're going to change our infill percentage down to, let's say, 3% actually. Make it really, really sparse. Just enough to support the next uh, denser infill at the top, but that's about it. What we can also change is under layer, we can turn top and bottom solid layers off which means it's just gonna do infill. We don't have to worry about it printing in a solid layer for top and bottom when we're not actually going to see it. So we can turn those off. 0.3 again, so it's nice and coarse. And advanced again, this is important. We're actually going to start it, as we said, at 31, so where the other one left off. And we're going to stop at 79. Too easy, all right, let's see how that looks. Let's go to prepare to print. And this is important, we wanna select all and then OK. So this is what we've got so far. We've got this nice sparse infill and then we've got this dense real for infill for the base of the model where we need more strength. And then it goes up like that and stops just below where we're going to add a denser infill again. Exit preview. And for this last part, we don't actually need to use the cross section analysis tool anymore because it's gonna go till the, the part's finished. So control C again, copy paste. And this one's gonna be called 79 plus because it's to the end of the model. So we're gonna change a couple of things here. We're gonna change the infill to be quite dense again, but also going to change our layer heights so we get more detail. So let's go to layer and I'm gonna make it 0.2. As I said, you could change this to any number you want if you wanna take more time to get a de more uh, detail, but 0.2 should be fine for this model. It's quite large. And under the infill, we wanna change this again and I'm going to make it back to 15. So you can slide it or you can also enter a number here, 15. And finally, this is really important, don't forget to change it. We're going under the advanced tab again, we're going to start and stop, but this time we're starting at 79. And we let it continue so we don't need to enter when it stops. And there's one last thing we do need to change for our final process and that is the top solid layer. We did turn them off before for our middle slice because we don't need it. But for this one, we do need it, otherwise the top will be open and you'll just see the raw infill. So top solid layers, three. That should be nice and solid. So everything's complete, we'll select all and then okay. And here we have it. It starts with a dense infill for strength, then it's gonna cap that off and do a sparse infill. And the majority of the part is this sparse infill, saving time and plastic. Then we have dense infill kicking in again to support the finer detail we've got at the top of the hammer with the 0.2 millimeter layer heights. And it finishes off with a nice infill at the top and three solid layers, capping it off nicely. And that's our part. So it's gonna take roughly five hours less than it would normally. And you're not gonna see really any visible difference. It's gonna look pretty much the same. It might weigh a bit less because we're using less plastic. But apart from that, you're gonna save yourself time and money by using multiple processes. But there's one more trick I wanna show you, and even if you've been using Simplify 3D for a long time, you might not know about this, and it's called grouping, which you can do to models and processes. So what I'm going to do is select all my processes, holding down Shift, then go to Edit, and Group Selection. So grouped processes are extremely powerful because what you can do is you can tweak things on just one process 
and it will carry through to all the other processors in that group. This is fantastic for dialing in your temperatures because for example, you might have sliced at a different temperature for the different profiles. And you think, oh, I gotta go through all of them again to manually change them. Well, no, you don't actually have to do that. I can go to this one process, go to temperature and say, okay, my primary extruder, 220 is actually a bit hot for my 3D printer. I'm printing PLA, for example, I might want 190. Let's change it to that. And maybe the heated bed, 60 is a bit much. Let's change it to 45. Save a bit of energy. And hit okay. And then if you go through the other processes, you'll notice they've all changed to suit. It's also important to note with grouped processes that if you have values that are different when you group them, they won't link, which is handy because for our last process, we have a different layer height. We have a 0.2 millimeter layer height, but for the other processes, we have a 0.3. So because these values were different before we grouped them, they're not going to uh, change universally like the other ones. So just remember any setting that was the same before you grouped will stay the same in a group process, but any setting that was different will stay different. So I hope this video helps you save time and money with your 3D printing. As you saw with just this single model, you can shave off five or more hours from a 3D print just by doing some clever tricks using multiple processes. And if you're doing a production run of prints, spending the time to dial in multiple processes for a print can actually save you days of printing down the end. It's actually really, really powerful. It's something I've been using myself for quite a while. A big thanks to Simplify 3D for sponsoring this episode of 3D Printing 101 on Makers Muse. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see future 3D printing tips, tricks, and reviews on Makers Muse, don't forget to subscribe. It helps us out a huge amount. And if you haven't seen our other 3D Printing 101 videos, well, you've been in for a treat. We've got a massive playlist of many videos, hours of content for you to get started in the wonderful world of 3D printing. Thanks for watching, guys, and look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Makers Muse. Catch you later. Bye.